in something that can kill a lively party. I thought you'd never ask. Japan's nuclear regulars have told Tokyo Electric Power Company to properly lay power cables for safety equipment in one of its nuclear power plants. The reactors at the plant in Niigata Prefecture on the Japan seacoast have been offline since the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. Last year, at least 1,700 safety cables were found to have been jointly laid with other cables under the floor of the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant's central control room and in other areas. New government regulations introduced after the nuclear disaster require safety cables to be installed separately for fire management. On Wednesday, the Nuclear Regulation Authority said the way the cables are installed could cause the plant's safety functions to fail. Let me run that back for you. On Wednesday, the Nuclear Regulation Authority said the way the cables are installed could cause the plant's safety functions to fail. The authority concluded that this violates the new requirements. It instructed TEPCO to fix the problem. Duh. It also ordered the utility to check whether proper installation procedures have been followed for other safety equipment. It told TEPCO to report the inspection results by the end of March. Similar problems have been identified at five other nuclear plants across the country. Let me run that back for you. Similar problems have been identified at five other nuclear plants across the country. Concentrate, concentrate. I want fugu! It's considered a winter delicacy in Japan, and it doesn't come cheap. Blowfish, or fugu in Japanese, hit the auction block for the first time this year in Shimonoseki, western Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, poison, poison, tasty fish. Buyers and sellers stuck with tradition when negotiating deals. They grasp each other's fingers inside a cloth sleeve in order to keep bids secret. More than 11 tons of blowfish were brought to the Haida Mari fish market. The varieties on offer included the coveted wild torafugu. One wholesaler said thanks to good weather, the haul of wild torafugu was nearly four times that of last year. Prices are down from a year ago, but fugu is not a choice for diners on a budget. The highest grade went for roughly $100 per kilogram at the auction. They don't care and we don't care. There's like three scientists who give a shit. People gathered at Tokyo's Tsukiji fish market for a New Year ritual, the first auction of 2016. But the event left some feeling nostalgic. As NHK World's Yuji Osawa reports, the historic wholesale market is set for big changes this year. Like it has for decades, the ringing of a handbell marks the start of the New Year's first auction at Japan's top fish market. Tsukiji Market gathers the best tuna, frozen and fresh, from ports around Japan and overseas. More than 2,000 were on sale early Tuesday morning for wholesale dealers to bid on. The first auction of the year is seen as a celebration and commands the highest prices. This year, a 200-kilogram bluefin from northern Japan fetched about $120,000. It has great importance, as this was the last New Year opening auction at Tsukiji. And it marks the end of an era. The aging market will close its doors and be relocated to another part of the city in November. It's regrettable. We've been coming here for decades. Since it opened in 1935, Tsukiji Market has supplied many of Japan's kitchens and in recent years has attracted many visitors. It's become one of the most popular tourist spots in Tokyo. Store owners are working to keep it that way. 
the wholesale Tsukiji market will move, but the outer market nearby is going to stay here. So the shop owners have regarded 2016 as the crucial year to continue their business. They plan to expand the outer market to house stores selling fresh seafood, fruit and vegetables. An open square will also offer visitors a place to relax. Business owners hope this will help them keep their customers, tourists and professional chefs from nearby upscale neighborhoods. We will try our best to keep customers coming back in the same way. We'll make efforts to offer better products at cheaper prices, so we won't lose our customers. They hope Tsukiji can maintain the hustle and bustle that has made it a world-renowned culinary hub. Yuji Osawa, NHK World, Tsukiji, Tokyo. Young people who were forced to flee their hometown near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in 2011 have attended a coming-of-age ceremony. 63 new adults who used to live in Futaba town attended Sunday ceremony in Iwaki city. Many of the town's residents evacuated to Iwaki. Futaba's mayor handed them certificates and asked them to work for the reconstruction of their hometown. When the Fukushima disaster happened, I was helped by the defense forces. So I decided to become a member. I hope to be an adult who appreciates people who helped us through the disaster. And I want to be there to help people when some other disaster happens in the future. For some of the participants, it was their first reunion since the disaster. People who were forced to flee their homes near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant started the new year off at a special event that included prayers for good health and recovery from the disaster. The annual event took place at a shrine in the Odaka district of Minamisoma city. Young people performed acrobatic stunts atop a six-meter tall ladder. I hope everyone will be able to return, and life here will be just like it was before. Residents were forced to leave the district after the nuclear disaster in 2011, but they are allowed to go back to stay temporarily in the area.
not impossible. Seven more nuclear hotspots were found just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. This is on top of many already discovered in the area. Dangerous radioactive materials have been spreading from a nuclear waste dump in the town, which used to be storage for the Manhattan Project. RT's Marina Portnaya went there this summer to find out just how damaging this has been. Kids are just down here exploring all the time. When Carl Chappell's children were frolicking in the cold water creek beds of St. Louis, Missouri, decades ago, he had no clue his kids were literally playing in poison. At the time they were doing that, most of that contaminated material that was in there was up top. It would be decades before Carl and thousands of other families discovered that the 15 mile creek was flowing with lethal radioactive material. My son was diagnosed with appendix cancer in 2011. And that basically was the time that we started really putting everything together. Stories courageously shared by families on Facebook led the community to begin investigating. People started getting diagnosed with cancer before 40. And these were very active people, very healthy. Um, very healthy people. It just didn't make sense. Um, several friends from my high school, again, brain cancer, appendix cancer, um, and bizarre female cancers that are supposedly, you know, one in a million as well. Um, people with thyroid cancer, thyroid disorders, leukemia, leukemias that are, you know, traced only to radiation exposure. It all goes back to World War II when America tested its first nuclear weapons, otherwise known as the Manhattan Project. Radioactive waste was later on dumped near the creek, contaminating nearby farmland. Even a day like today when, you know, my doctor's like, you need to get out and walk and such. 18 months ago, Mary Osco was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. She's never smoked a cigarette in her life. As far as my government, I want him to look at this was part of national defense. The Manhattan Project was to, to um, get the atomic bomb so that we could go over and, you know, win the war and, and uh, defeat Japan and, and take out these cities. But we're still victims. We're still casualties of World War II. We have 48 cases of appendix cancers registered. For a city our size, we should have one, two, and we have 48. Nearly 2,000 cancer cases have been reported in neighborhoods around the creek. Among them, Angela Hebling's mother, who died of brain cancer at age 39. Her father has stage 4 throat cancer. I used to play there. And Angela herself has been deemed a medical anomaly by doctors. I was diagnosed with pleomorphic adenoma. It's a it's a tumor that's in your parotid gland. From my own research, I've discovered that that tumor is commonly seen in Hiroshima bomb victim survivors. In June, the Army Corps of Engineers announced that it found more radioactive soil in various areas, including this public park. What you're looking at right here is basically an excavation. What we do is we go down and we will remove contaminated soil. We sample it. What we're dealing with is generally a low-level contamination, but it does pose a long-term threat, and that's what we stay focused on. So right now, if you walked over a spot that has contamination, chances are it's six inches to several feet underneath clean soil. For Carl Chappell's family, that long-term threat is very real. His father died of cancer at age 48, and just a few months ago, his son suffered the same fate at 44 years old. He did pretty well the first couple of years, but it was in, in uh, March of 2014 is when he really had gotten uh, sick, and then it was beyond anything that they could really do for him. Uh, and then he passed away 86 days ago. The Army Corps of Engineers has spent 17 years excavating and cleaning up the poisons of Cold Water Creek. Yet so far, the U.S. government has done nothing to study the health consequences that this disaster has had on countless families. Marina Pornaya, RT, St. Louis, Missouri. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, just made an announcement that illustrates how terrifyingly precarious our situation is here on planet Earth. They released their findings of a 15-month-long investigation, which said that a nuclear power plant and its contractor knowingly skipped fire inspections and also lied about it. Because 
Who cares? We're only talking about fires in a nuclear power plant. What could possibly go wrong? They actually made up records about inspections happening. The company that owns the power plant is called Entergy. Like energy, but Entergy. Their contractor is called GCA Contractors. By law, nuclear power plants are required to make hourly fire inspections so that, you know, they don't blow themselves up and radiate part of the planet. Those inspections take place in areas where sensitive equipment is located, like wiring and piping, involved in operating the nuclear reactor during accidents or emergencies. So it's very important to make sure there are no fires there ever, hence the legal inspection requirement. But it turns out GCA wasn't conducting those inspections. But they pretended they did, though, falsifying records to show inspections were occurring over a 10-month period. And there were other safety issues, like there were missing door alarms. Like, you know, when the crap hits the fan at a nuclear power plant and an alarm on a door starts honking and flashing red. Yeah, at Entergy, they missed some of those alarms. To make matters worse, Entergy knew all about their safety issues. They were told on different occasions by different people that their inspections were hinky, but they did nothing about it. So the NRC investigated and found out about it, and now they're giving Entergy the opportunity to request what's called a pre-decisional enforcement conference. And basically what that is is a chance for Entergy to sit down with the NRC to reach some sort of understanding, meaning it's a way for them to figure out how to lessen the penalty they'll have to pay. And hey, guess what? Those conferences generally aren't open to the public. So, you know. However they proceed from here, I'm sure Entergy and the NRC will figure out how to best forget this whole mess. So, this is the precarious situation of our planet today, with humans at the controls, doing things like naming companies Entergy, and lying about fire inspections, and red tape bureaucracy regulating it all. Right. What could possibly go wrong? Starting off with breaking news this hour, South Korea's weather officials say they detected a man-made tremor in the northern part of North Korea on Wednesday morning. They suspect the North carried out a nuclear test. They say the tremor was estimated at magnitude 4.3. Instruments tracked the tremor to an area in the northeast close to Pungeri, the site of previous nuclear tests. Japan's defense officials are analyzing the details. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga also says there's a possibility that it was caused by a nuclear test. We'll keep you updated as more details come in. Now, in the past hour, an earthquake tremor has been detected close to North Korea's nuclear test site. Uh, South Korea says it is man-made, triggering concerns the country has conducted a fresh atomic explosion. Uh, North Korea said it was planning to make a special significant announcement, that's a quote, uh, about the event. The announcement is due to happen in the next half an hour or so. The U.S. Geological Survey said the epicenter of the quake was in the northeast of the country, uh, around 50 kilometers northwest of Kilju City, placing it right next to the Pungiri nuclear test site. Now, if confirmed, it would be North Korea's fourth nuclear test. Japan said the earthquake may have been a nuclear test. China has said it suspects an explosion. Meanwhile, South Korea's Yonhap News Agency said that uh, ministers were holding an emergency meeting. We will keep you updated and bring you more on that uh, as it develops. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea announced today it had carried out a hydrogen bomb test. The DPLK's nuclear test, if confirmed, is in clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions and is deeply regulatable. I strongly urge the DPLK to implement fully all relevant resolutions of the UN Security Council and the IAEA. The IAEA remains ready 
to contribute to the peaceful resolution of the DPLK nuclear issue by resuming its nuclear verification activities in the DPLK once a political agreement is reached among countries concerned. Speaking to reporters shortly after the test, Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe condemned North Korea's actions. North Korea's nuclear test is a major threat to the safety of our country. It's totally unacceptable and we strongly condemn the act. We will cooperate with the U.S., South Korea, China and Russia as a non-permanent U.N. Security Council member. Together, we will consider a firm course of action, including measures at the Security Council level. Defense Minister Gen Nakatani told reporters that he immediately met with his officials. I asked my personnel to closely cooperate with all related organizations, the United States and others to gather information and to do more surveillance activities. Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida said North Korea's provocative act violates UN Security Council resolutions and a joint statement adopted at the six-party talks on the country's nuclear program. He added that it is a grave challenge to peace and stability in the region and the wider global community and strongly criticized it.